Okay, it has been two years since I recorded a DocuSign video. That is just shameful, and I'm sure there's been updates since then. And if you're new here, I'm Brent Brewer, your favorite tech trainer, and I'm also a certified DocuSign trainer. I can't believe it's been this long since I filmed a DocuSign video. So today I'm going to walk you through this command and DocuSign workflow through KW command over to DocuSign and then back to command again. And this is going to be for my market center, but it will help you in any market center. You just have to abide by the documents that your market center requires. If you're in Houston, this video will really help you. And if you're in my market center, for sure. But let's get into it. Okay. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need your command login. You're going to have to get in there and you will have to log in. The second thing you're going to need to do is go to your name in the top right corner, click on settings, and make sure that your DocuSign is connected. If it's not connected, you need to make sure and get that connected before you go through the rest of this video. The second thing you need to do is you need to go into DocuSign. You need to go in and log in. And I'm not in command anymore. I switched to a new tab and I'm in DocuSign. Let me make it bigger for you. You want to click on your name in the top right or your initials or your photo. And you want to click on preferences when you get there. You'll click on this integration button on the left hand side. And you want to make sure you have these providers. If you don't have three providers, if you're in Texas, then you'll need to do that. And you'll click the add provider button. I think this is also relevant for Georgia, the Northwest, California, Aura, Oregon. So Texas Realtors, Realtors, Georgia, Northwest, California, and Oregon. So make sure if you're in any of those places that you come in here and you add your form provider. In Texas, you need to add Realtor and Texas Realtor, and it's going to ask you for your NRDI uh, number, your National Association of Realtor number. You can get that in your MLS or your association profile. You can get that from your NAR profile. Either way, you need that number in order to get your forms. Okay. Once you've done that, your forms provider will show up here and you can proceed with creating opportunities and command and connecting them to DocuSign. So let me go back over to the workflow after you've done that. And the first thing we want to do is create or find our contact within command. This step is almost irrelevant. So I'm going to skip it because we're going to go to number two and I'm going to show you a cool new step. Number two creating and finding the opportunity or creating that opportunity. So I'm going to go ahead and click on opportunities and then I'm going to click create opportunity. It's going to make sure that your market center is in, your team is here. And if you are on a team, make sure it's there, especially if you're the rainmaker, because it's not always defaulted. The opportunity type, this field you cannot change if you mess up. So make sure you're putting in the right type of opportunity, listing buyer, landlord, or tenant. For today's purposes, let's do buyer. And then you're going to put your client in here. So you can either search them, right? Or if they're not in here, you can come and create a new contact. So let's just say, uh, I'm going to call this John Doe. And let's go ahead and just add John Doe as a contact. Boop right there. It's going to ask you what their email address is and their phone number. You can put it in, you can leave it blank and add it later. And then if there's a co-buyer, you can do the same thing. This is a testing opportunity for me. So I'm just going to put testing, but if it's your opportunity and you know the address they're buying, go ahead and put that at the beginning of your opportunity name as well. For listings, always put that address in there in the opportunity name, but for uh, buyers, you may not know till later. You got your custom tags, your close date, your time frame. You can put all that in, but the only thing that's required to get that opportunity started are the things or the fields with a red asterisk, right? So that's going to be your market center, your opportunity type, your owner, and your commission rate and your opportunity phase stage. And if you're on a team, the assignee. So I'm going to go ahead and just put my commission rate that I charge and the phase and stage. I'm going to leave it at cultivate and watch. And then of course I am the assignee and then I will click create. Okay. My opportunity did get created. So my testing, testing John Doe is right here. So I'm just going to click and here I am in my opportunity. Once you get in your opportunity, you need to make sure this property box is filled in. It's going to help you later when you go to submit your commission request. And then any key dates, these key dates are going to track against your goals. If you set your goals in command and you will do that in this report section. Okay. So do that later. And then on your financial information, you can put that in as well, but we're headed over to documents. 
Right. Now, when you're in documents, there's a lot going on on this page. On the far left-hand side, you have your checklists and you have folders within that checklist. In the middle of the page here, you've got your document placeholders that you need to turn into your market center. It's going to tell you your status, if it's required, and which document it actually is. Over here on the right, you can click to upload a document from your computer, or you can change this to attach from DocuSign or DotLoop, but not until you hit the start a transaction button. This start a transaction button is what links your command opportunity to your DocuSign room. So you'll make sure that you click that and you come in here and do this opportunity before you go to before you ever do any documents in DocuSign. Otherwise they will not be connected. Okay. Now I'm going to pick my checklist, which is residential. You'll pick yours depending on the type of transaction you're doing. And if you're in a buying opportunity, you'll click on consultation under contract or closed or whatever the names of your folders are. Me, I'm in consultation right now, but I may be already having my buyer under contract. If so, I'm going to look in both folders and get all of those documents done. For now, we're just going to do that consultation one. And then we're going to click on start a transaction. And then it's going to ask me because I have two e-signing softwares connected, it's going to ask me which one I want to do. Well, today we're doing DocuSign. I'll do dot loop. I'll update a dot loop video for you guys in the future. All right. So now I'm in DocuSign. My room has auto populated with some forms that I have required. Let me pop over to command on that tab real quick and just make sure. So I need my information about brokerage services, my buyer tenant representation agreement, my wire fraud, and my general information. That is what is required just for a consultation submission. So let me go back over to DocuSign and make sure I have those that came in my room. So we have our buyer's walkthrough, which I don't need yet, general information, the rep agreement, third party I don't need yet, and the wire fraud. So I'm missing the information about brokerage services. So I'm gonna click over here and click add DocuSign forms. I'm gonna go to my Texas Association of Realtors library. And then I'm just going to search brokerage so that IABS will come up. And this is a buy side. So I want to make sure I click on the information about serv a brokerage services buying because DocuSign has all the documents in there twice. If some are for listings and some are for buyers. So they've mapped the fields for signing to, to the buy side or the listing side. So make sure you're putting the correct version in there. And then I can add selected. I know you might've noticed this little box here and I do have a template so I can use that now if I want to, but I'll show you just a second how to use a template. So we're going to go ahead and click add selected. And now my information about brokerage services is here. So you can add that template when you add the document, or if it's already in your room, you can right click and click the apply form template option. And then it's going to ask you which one you want to use. So that's going to apply the template to my document. Now, before we ever start filling our documents, we want to head over to the details tab inside of the room and click on it. And then we're going to click edit and we're going to fill in all the details we know. It's important because all of these details, if you fill them in the details section, are going to go into any fields that match in your documents. It's going to be auto fill for you and you only have to type it once if you do it in the details. I'm going to skip this for today, but I want you to go ahead and put it in details. When you're done, you just click that save button at the bottom and then you head over to your documents tab and you start filling in your documents. So I'm going to pretend like we filled in all these documents. Okay. I'm not here to show you how to fill these documents in. I'm showing you how to use DocuSign and command. So now that we've pretended to fill in these documents, we're going to get them ready to get signed. Okay. And so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I've got four documents here ready to be signed. So I'm going to select the documents I want to be signed and I'm going to click this envelope button and I'm going to put them in an envelope. Who needs to sign them? Well, a representation agreement needs to be signed by the buyer's agent and their buyer. If you have more than one buyer, you'll select buyer two. All right. And then we will click, I'm going to take off that buyer two because I only have one in here. And I'm just going to click continue. And right now DocuSign is getting those documents ready to be signed. It's adding those signature fields to those documents and it's going to pull up your details page of your envelope. So here we are in the details page of the envelope. I can add documents or remove documents in this section. I also can rearrange them. I always like my information about broker services to be first and then my wire fraud and then my general information and then my buyer rep agreement. So I have all my documents here and then I have the people who need to sign. And so I'm just going to put in my own email address here so that I can sign this document. And then you can add or remove recipients as you need to right here. You can click this little trash can that's going to remove somebody. And then you can click this add a recipient button to add more people. Pay attention to what they need to do. So 
these two people need to sign, but you can change, you can add people and just allow them to re to view it or receive a copy. So maybe an assistant needs a copy of something or maybe, you know, a parent or a child needs a copy of something their parents are signing. You never know who might need a copy, but you can always send it that way as well. Now here is the subject of your email that DocuSign is going to send. You can leave it how it is or you can change it, but this is not the place to explain documents to your clients. This is to tell them about the documents you're sending them that you already went over. Then we're gonna click next. And we're going to look over our documents and make sure they're filled out correctly and that the signature line and the signature fields and dates are in the right place. So over here on the top left, you can see here's both of our signers and here are our standard fields. These are color coordinated so that you know who's signing. So we can see green is actually my buyer and green is being initialed and signed here. So that looks good. My wire fraud warning, it's got the good signatures on it. I forgot to select that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna roll through and check it real quick. Everything looks good. Now we're pretending I filled this out, right? We're pretending it's filled out because I did not go through and show you guys how to fill it. You can make changes inside the envelope, but just remember if you type something in a text box in the envelope, it will not, it will not change in the room. It only changes here in the envelope. So I'm going to check this. I'm going to make sure all the signatures and initials are there and the dates. And then once I've checked it, not only once, but twice, then I'm gonna send it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click send. And now you can see I end up after clicking send right back in my envelope and it says needs my signature. So me as the owner of this DocuSign account can sign inside the envelope. Your clients will get an email. So I'm gonna go ahead and click sign and then start and then I'm gonna go sign this. And this part is important because you need to know how to explain this to your clients and how to help them through any DocuSign issues. An important piece of information is that when they're done signing, they have to click this finish button or the document will not come back to you. Now, once you finish signing, your clients will also get a copy and they'll get to sign it just like you did. I have the same email address going on in here. So I'm just gonna sign this pretending to be the client and here we go. But just make sure you know how it works and how you can help your clients to get this done either over the phone or virtually. All right. So both of those are both people have signed now and you can see my envelope has changed to completed. If I go back to my documents tab, you can see it hasn't come in yet, but if I refresh and while we wait for that, we are going to organize our DocuSign room with folders. And you remember over here, let me show you back in my opportunities tab. We have our consultation under contract and closed folder. Well, we want to make folders to organize our DocuSign room that match those folders so that we can keep organized and keep things straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click actions, add folder, and I'm going to name it number one. And we're going to call it Tation. I can't spell today. Okay. And then we're going to click create. We're going to do it again with a folder, another folder, and we're going to do it with under contracts, create. And then we're going to do one more folder and we're going to do cool. Number three, closed and create. And then you can do more. I do one for certifications and also one for miscellaneous. So I'm going to go ahead and do those now. You don't have to, but I'm going to. And here we go. All right. So I have all my folders created. And at this time, my documents should have had enough time to come into this to the room signed. So you can see here, this folder is called room docs. That's going to be the default folder for documents inside every DocuSign room. So I'm going to go ahead and click this refresh button and see if my documents have come in. And now you can see that they have, and you can see there's a huge difference here. So this red is a PDF, this red icon, right? It's showing that this document is a PDF. This is a certification. This is showing who signed the documents and what their IP address is and what time they signed it and everything. So this is proof of signing. So you need to keep these. The second one is green and it has a little check and it says signed. This is the signed document with the same name here. So you can see I have two documents, same thing. One is a blue fillable form and one is a green signed PDF. This document can no longer be modified because it's signed, it's not fillable. If you need to make changes, you're gonna to have to go back to the form and then either archive this or move it to your miscellaneous documents, okay? All right, so the first thing I wanna do is show you how to move documents. So I'm gonna select this one, it's the certification. I'm gonna click move and then I'm gonna make it in a folder. I'm gonna select that destination. It's gonna be a folder and it's gonna be in my certifications folder. 
and I'm going to click move. The signed documents are all going to go in my consultation folder. So I'm going to go select all of those with the green for now. And then I'm going to move those to a folder in a current room. And those are going to go in my consultation folder. Now, when I get one to four family contracts or the under contract documents, I'm going to come do the same thing. And I'm just going to move them into my under contract folder. So for now, we've only done our consultation. So at this point, I have fillable forms left in my room docs. And I have all my documents in my consultation folder that have been signed. At this point, I want to go back over to command. And because command doesn't know all the work we've been doing in DocuSign, I want to go ahead and click that refresh button in the top left of my browser. Once I do that, I should be able to attach files from DocuSign and then it defaults to the room docs folder, but I want to make sure and do that consultation folder. And then I'll be able to look at each document here and select the document that's in that folder. And there's no uploading or downloading to your computer. You're just telling command that the document you want to attach here is in that DocuSign room and this is what it's called. So I'm going to repeat that process for all the documents that I have signed so far. And now you can see I have all of my required documents. And if I need anything else, I can add that as well. And then once I'm done, I will click submit to Market Center. It's going to ask you if you want to, and then you'll click submit. And that's it. That is your command and DocuSign workflow. Let me know in the comments below if that helped. And I'll see you next time. Enjoying this video? Say thanks by sending your referrals my way. I work with buyers and sellers in Houston, Conroe, Spring, and the Woodlands, Texas. And yes, I pay referral fees. You'll find my info in the description, or you can text me at 281-468-5145. Hope to hear from you soon.